In our previous example, we were using a router as the DHCP server. Let's see how to configure a Cisco IOS router to do that. This might be really useful in a small to medium size deployment. Let's do a show run and take a look at a few commands we issued to make this happen. These are the commands we used. First, let me draw your attention to the IP DHCP excluded address commands. As you can see, we can have multiple ranges of these commands. And what we're saying with this first command is, I'm excluding, I'm not going to be handing out IP addresses in the range that begins with 10.1.1.1 all the way through 10.1.1.100. Also, I'm not going to be handing out IP addresses in the range of 10.1.1.200 all the way through 10.1.1.254. In other words, I'm only going to be handing out IP addresses in the range of 10.1.1.101 through 10.1.1.199. And we might want to exclude ranges like this because maybe we've got devices that have static addresses assigned in this range. Maybe we have a print server. Maybe we have a router interface that's in this range. But once we exclude any addresses in a subnet that we do not want to give out, then we can tell the router, all right, start handing out IP addresses and other types of information for this subnet. We can create one or more IP DHCP pools. And we could have multiple pools. We could have a pool per subnet. And notice that I'm saying network 10.1.1.0, and we're giving a 24-bit subnet mask. By the way, there's a really cool shortcut. Let me show you this. If I go into that pool, if I say IP DHCP pool PC, I'm going to re-enter the network command. I want to show you a shortcut way of doing that. We could say network 10.1.1.0, and instead of giving a dotted decimal representation of the subnet mask, check this out. I can do a slash 24. It will accept that and understand that as a 24-bit subnet mask. I really wish we could do that when we were assigning IP addresses to interfaces, but at least we can do it here. And it's not enough just to give a device an IP address and a subnet mask. We've got to give it a default gateway so it can get off of its local network. And you see that we've done that here. We say default hyphen router, and we're specifying the IP address of the router interface so this device can get off of its local subnet. And there are various other parameters we can specify, such as a DNS server. So this PC, if it's running a browser and somebody types in cisco.com, that PC knows an IP address that can resolve cisco.com into a corresponding IP address. And let me show you a very verification command. We can do a show IP DHCP. I want to use some context sensitive help. And if we want to get some summary information about the pools that we've created, we could say show IP DHCP pool. We can see right now that we have one address leased out as a member of that pool. We've excluded 155 addresses from that pool. And another command I use a lot is show IP DHCP binding. This is going to show us any existing leases that we have. Here we see the IP address that's currently leased out to a device. It's leased out to the PC on screen, which is really a router. And we see when the lease expires as well. And that is a basic example of how we can take a Cisco IOS router and use it as a DHCP server. And we can do this for multiple subnets in our organization.